Hi guys, this is Mary Poplin from Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to talk about how to fit a warped insert into Nuke using Mocha's lens export and Mocha's tracking data. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to locate all of the lines in the shot that need to be straight, because what we're doing is we're using the lens tool to generate the curve of the shot by judging what lines need to be straight and then adjusting them to be straight the calculation between those differences is going to be our lens curve so we hit in for new line and we connect the dots just like this we hit in for new line and what we're doing is we are selecting lines in the scene that are good reference points because when you ask Mocha to locate lines Mocha picks every hard edge because Mocha is a computer and while it's a very smart computer it is not you and it is not able to make logical deductions so we're gonna hit N for new line and last line here so we've made a couple of lines to use as reference points now what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide what kind of distortion this is in this case it's gonna be a one parameter because it's a single barrel distortion two parameter would be two spherical distortions which is gonna be your fisheye lens and then anamorphic you'll recognize when you see it now we're just gonna select one parameter and we're gonna hit calibrate and now our grid is curved okay now what this means is that we have calculated our lens the next thing we need to do is export our lens data because we're going to bring this into nuke so we go to export lens data and we go and select distortion map clip we can also export this as lens data for after effects which is a plug-in but we're going to just do distortion map clip because we're going to nuke and we're going to select our undistort and we're going to make sure that this is the same exact dimensions as our original clip and we're going to do that because this is going to generate a sphere and we want to make sure that our object is distorted correctly. So we go ahead and hit save. Okay, and then we go to export lens data and we need our distort. Now our distort actually has to be larger. Okay, and if it's not larger, what we're going to have is we're going to have a distortion around the edges of our image when we use this. So let's go ahead and hit save for this as well. And this saves these to our results folder. Moving on, we need to generate our tracking data. What I'm going to do is I'm going to track this screen. If you don't know how to track a screen, we have a lot of tutorials on it. So I'm going to breeze through this because the most important thing is showing you how to get this data in. But we are going to talk about some of the techniques for tracking here. Now, you'll notice that I'm tr currently tracking this entire screen. I actually don't want to because this is animated and that will mess up my track. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Add to Xblind tool and we're just going to cut this right out of the center. Okay. Now, you can see the white area is everything that we're tracking. I'm going to turn my surface tool on and we are going to arrange our surface tool to the corners of our screen, just like this. And now we're going to hit translation scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. We're going to overscan our screen just a little bit because I want to make sure that I cover the entire screen when we export this. And we're going to go ahead and turn our mat off and we're going to call this screen track and I'm going to hit track forward. All right, once we are confident that our track looks good, we're gonna go ahead and export our tracking data. So I'm gonna select export tracking data and we're gonna select nuke corner pin. Now what's actually really important here is that we click remove lens distortion. So let's go ahead and copy that to the clipboard, just like this. Now over in Nuke, what we're going to do is we're just going to paste our data in. Now let's go ahead and load all the nodes that we're going to need. We're going to need a read node, so let's hit R for read, and let's load in our footage, just like this. Okay, now let's hit R for read, and let's load in our insert. All right, now let's hit R for read, and let's go ahead and let's load in our distortion map. All right, so we have our distortion map, our insert, and our background, and our corner pin. We're just going to go ahead and hook our corner pin up to our read node. And our ST map over here needs a ST node, so let's go ahead and hit ST map node, just like this. Now, we need to load the ST map arrow into our read for our distortion map, and we need to load our SRC right here into our corner pin okay and we're going to go ahead and do a merge so just an m for merge and we're going to hook that up over the background so let's go ahead and look at what that looks like now you can see that this is a little larger than i would like for it to be let's go ahead and hit st map all right so let's go to our st map and let's select rgba and rgba 
All right, and now you can see that the curve is applied, but it's actually off. So what are we going to do about that? Well, we're going to come in here and we're going to put a reformat node in. So let's go ahead and go to tab and let's go to reformat. Now we have this reformat node and let's just go ahead and reformat this to 1280 by 760. And in our reformat type, we're going to do type, we're going to do reformat type and we're going to hit none. So right here under resize type, it's really important that you hit none. And now this moves along nicely. All right, so if we play this, what we end up with is our corner pin that moves curved and composited correctly in our shot. But there's no motion blur, so what are we going to do about that? Well, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and hit our reformat node and we'll go tab and we'll go to Oflow. And in Oflow, we're just going to change our speed to 1 so that we don't actually retime our insert. And we're going to change the shutter time to about 2, samples to about 50. We'll do this at about 0.5. Vector detail is going to be about 0.5. And smoothness is going to be about 0.5. And so now, if we go ahead and play this, what we'll end up with is a curved screen that moves along with our corner pin that has motion blur all in Nuke using data from Mocha Pro. I'm Mary Poplin, and if you have any questions about how to use Mocha Pro and Nuke together, please let us know on our forums, or you can contact support by going to our website at www.imagineersystems.com. I hope you have a wonderful day.